Previously on Eric the Car Guy. No. <coughs> I'm good. I need room. Here's a look at today's pain and suffering. Actually, urea grease is the Jolly Green Giant's pee. Because it comes from his urethra. That's why they call it urea. I keep looking at this hoping it's gonna change and it's not. I just don't see it. It doesn't even look like it does in the pictures. <laughs> Since I last saw you, I bent uh, two rear brake lines going back and then there were some other <laughs> bent up lines like the fuel lines and everything going back there were kind of a mess. I had to do a little bit of massaging to get that to work. It took a bit of time to make all those lines happen, but I'm happy with the way they turned out and I believe they're not gonna leak. <laughs> anyway, I gotta put all this suspension and all the rest of this car together today. I gotta get moving, let's go. This is the uh, brace that I modified uh, in order to make the catch can connections work on the back of the engine block, but it supports the back of the intake manifold because it sticks out from the engine a little bit and uh, also has a bunch of brackets and things for some other stuff to keep all that in line. Yes, brackety thing is a perfect description for this. Now this is, this is for the rear engine mount. So one of the things that I did like really quick to add a little bit to the front of this car was the condenser had like 150 mile, 150,000 miles worth of damage on the front of it. All the paint and everything had gone away. You can see that it's back now and you can't use regular paint to do this. What I used was this Eastwood uh, radiator paint. It comes in gloss and flat. I'm gonna use the flat here and it just, it makes it look better. Now I use this chassis clean to clean it out before I painted it because you don't want to paint over the bugs and all that stuff. And the cleaner it is, the better it's going to work. So clean it out and you can paint it with this and it will look like new. In addition to assembling, I'm also checking and double checking other things. So I'm not just looking at the thing that I'm, that perhaps I'm installing. I'm looking at other things around said thing and making sure that those are also installed correctly. Now some of these only have two shanked bolts, but this guy has three. So you don't have to worry about where the two go or where they go specifically so much. You just need to make sure that they're all started before you run them down. Nice, make it pretty, make it pretty. We're gonna get the fuel tank in now. These fasteners, these bent nail looking things, are the ones that hold the back of the fuel tank straps up. And these uh, 14s are the ones that hold it up, up front, which I'm gonna install now so I can get the tank in here. You know what, I'll leave them a little bit loose. That way I get a little more movement out of them. Okay, connected, connected. It's got a fuel tank. Still need to sort that out, but at least they're out of the way. These little rubber caps go into here and they're supposed to be installed at the PDI, so pre-delivery inspection. And these are the, the tie downs for when they're on the transport truck. So they put the hook in here and they use it to hold it down. These never got installed, but I happen to have a set, so I'm installing them. Can't forget to tighten these. Oh, not going anywhere. This seems like an easy target of opportunity, so... 
I've already carefully positioned the rack. You can see how difficult this is out of the car. I marked right here where it came out and I marked the shaft so that I know it's in position, which is pretty important in all of this, frankly, because if you get this off and the steering wheel's off, you could mess up the cable reel inside the steering wheel because you turned it too far. It's uh, very important to try to keep things just as they came apart. Now, when I painted the subframe, I wanted to preserve as many of the original markings as I could. So you'll see, I just, there was no rust here, so I just left that. To me, that adds a certain, I don't know, authenticity to it. I don't have another word for it, but um, I like that. So this is on purpose. I keep looking at this like, how is it gonna work? How is it gonna work? It's never gonna work, but it came apart. Okay, there is something. It's on the fricking mounts. That makes more sense. Like a lot more sense. And it also looks like I have to put the control arms on. I remember these being in a specific order because one's big and one's little and one will only go this far. Yep. All right, I guess we just gotta tighten that stuff down. Okay. Now I'm gonna wait and tighten these till I get these two in. Or tighten this particular fastener. Spot freaking on, Brian. Space madness is what I have. You go like so, and you go like so. You're learning. I guess these do have like a massive space here. From the looks of it. See what I'm seeing here? Like there's a giant space there. I wager it. If I read the instructions, I bet they say, just get rid of that. Cause look how everything lines up without it. That just went right in. Whenever I put stabilizer bar bushings on, I always put some silicone paste on the inside. Because the stabilizer bar just moves as the suspension articulates. And sometimes, especially like poly bushings, if you're putting poly bushings in, they can get loud. So you want to do this with poly bushings, no matter what. Front right. This one also says FR. So, I guess so long as they're pointing toward the front. You know what? Same as with the rest, because there's stuff that's got to pass through here. So, given that, I'm just gonna leave things a little bit loose so that they uh, can all go together more easily and not bind stuff up. But the stabilizer bar is on, yay. Okay, if I remember right, that was on. There was a technical service bulletin on when you would steer like Civics and Integras with a groaning noise, especially in colder weather. And that was coming from this bushing right here. Honda sent us high temp urea grease to lubricate this area to get rid of that groaning noise. And it feels like there's no better time to deal with that than right now. Legit service bulletin. I don't remember the number, but it does exist. And that should keep the talk bar nice and quiet. Remember these guys? These are rigid collars from Spoon. So the types that are flat like this, they'll only have one 
part sticking out, these go on the bottom. And anything like this, these go on the top. So there are specific locations for each of these outlined in the instructions. And I'm going to find all of them now and insert them before we put this in the car. That goes there. That goes there. I'm gonna say that goes there. And that goes there. Huh. I totally figured out what they said to do. <laughs> like one of them is kind of upside down according to that photo. So this side, the small end goes in there and the big end sticks up and this side, the large end goes in and the small end sticks up. Transmission jack for the win if you're working on the ground. It really is. Sweet, let's put some bolts in. Sweet. Okay. We're safe now. We're in the safe zone. Okay, let's go in. Ah, there you are. Okay. I'm drawing all these up slowly, a little bit at a time. That way I'm completely sure that those delicate aluminum collars have seated properly. And then I'm gonna run around with a torque wrench. But I'm not gonna blast them in with an impact. I'm not, you know, especially that, those things are delicate. Don't do that. Well, that's it. The, the front K member is in there. Still got to do some front suspension work, but this is pretty heavy stuff. And maybe the last time I need to get the transmission jack out. So I'm happy about that. So it should be fairly straightforward from here. Should be. Yeah, it should be straightforward, but how often is it actually straightforward? I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will put a link to the next episode when it becomes available. And if you haven't seen the previous episodes, they'll be linked in the description. If you have questions about tools or parts you saw in the video, check the description. I usually link them down there for you. But if I didn't, leave me a comment and let me know, and I'll see what I can do for you. Otherwise, if you have automotive questions, I ask that you head to ericthecarguy.com. Also linked in the description. Seeing the pattern here. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time. Time.